We now welcome Dr. Wasim Badi, who's medical director of interventional radiology at Summit Medical Group. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How do you define interventional radiology? Interventional radiology is a subspecialty of radiology where we perform procedures using image guidance, so using CAT scan or ultrasound guidance. I can go ahead and make an intervention in anyone's organ, um, depending on if they need therapy or if they need a diagnosis. You know, this is part of an ongoing conversation, uh, an ongoing series on Think Tank that deals with um, the future of innovation and also the future of healthcare. Mm -hmm. They come together here because you've said that the future of radiology is in some ways your term, Star Trek medicine. Yes. Break it down. Star Trek medicine for me is, you know, patient goes in to see the doctor, um, you get your diagnosis, you get your treatment, and you're, you're out of there. Um, that's our goal. Uh, so what we do is when a patient comes in, they get the highest quality imaging possible. We make our diagnosis. If they need a biopsy, it's done through a needle hole, if we can get that done for that patient. And a lot of times now our treatments are done through needle holes. So I can place a catheter in someone's liver if they have a tumor and treat that tumor mm. through a small catheter, take out the catheter, patient's ready to go home. So uh, as we're following along, Dr. Body, I'm curious about this. The term embolization, yes. is that what you just described or is that something different? That's exactly what I described. Basically, embolization is when we starve a tumor of, of, of blood supply. Starve? Yeah, exactly. We want to take away all the blood supply from a tumor so that it doesn't have the nutrients it needs to grow. Now, when we do that, we can also inject radioactive beads in that tumor to also treat it with radiation or inject a chemotherapy agent into that tumor. Where's the innovation there? The innovation is basically, this is one of the new specialties in medicine. And 30 to 40 or 50 years ago, we weren't doing these procedures. Um, the innovation comes in with the technology that we use. We can do a CT while mm. the patient's on the table getting an embolization done, for instance. We can combine images. Um, so if patients already had an MRI, we could take that MRI, overlap it with the current images we have in the procedure room. Um, and use that to really efficaciously treat that tumor. I want to uh, disclose, as we always do, that Summit is one of the many healthcare organizations that supports our efforts. But let me ask you this. What I'm curious about is, is, is another issue that many, many people are dealing with who are watching us right now. Patients dealing with cancer. And also their families, their yes. caregivers. You've talked a lot about quality of life for patients dealing with cancer. I, I don't like to use the term, quote, cancer patients, but patients right. dealing with cancer. What does quality of life have to do with innovation? Cool. So quality of life, for me, uh, what that means is it's beyond treating the tumor. It, it's really addressing um, the issues that come about when you have a disease or diagnosis like cancer. So that could be something as simple as making sure that patient has enough food on the table, making sure they can have the transportation they need to go see their doctors. Um, or it could be financial, you know. So a lot of times when you ha if you have a serious tumor and you can't work, um, that financial strain could definitely be an impact on quality of life. Um, at Summit, we try to really address all those issues. We have a team uh, that can basically talk to you, figure out what's going on, and find you the resources that, mm -hmm. that you need to get, to get those addressed. Doctor, you've argued that a patient dealing with cancer, being more active, more social, more engaged in activities yeah. and others, is also a question of quality of life. It also impacts quality of life. How so? So, Sylvia, yeah, being a physician, I'm a scientist, and, and I love the science behind what we do, but I also should learn from my patients, and I see that patients who are happy, patients who are doing well and able to attend their family events, they do better. And, and well, hold on, what do you yeah. mean they do better? They're, they're, you mean the, the, outcome? the outcomes? Their outcomes are better. They, they, they feel better, they're more responsive to the treatment, they show up to their, to their visits on time, they're, they're in a better mood, and this, the research is starting to come out that if, if you have a strong support network, um, you will clinically do better. Um, and so if anything that I can do to really lead the patients towards mm -hmm. that type of lifestyle and, and give them that support on, on my end as physician, I'll, I'll, I'll make that effort to do that. Dr. Biden, let me ask you this. Go back to another question about no. innovation and use of, I think it's embolization. Yes. Is it used it? what other specific areas in terms of, um, is it prostate? 
gastric issues. Yes. How is it treated? Explain that. So it really depends on which organ we're talking about. Our, our first and initial foray with embolization was in the liver. And we treat liver tumors, and we are treating liver tumors with embolization. We treat them by injecting beads or radiation. You keep or saying beads. I yeah. hear that term a lot. Yeah. What, what do you mean beads? Beads are basically small, microscopic, sand-like you know, particles that are made of a polyvinyl alcohol, and we inject it in the blood vessel to clog up the blood vessel to prevent any flow to the tumor. Okay. And these are the same beads that we can use in the uterus, for instance, for a woman with uterine fibroids. Um, half of all women who are age 50 um, have uterine fibroids. Half? Half. And they may not all be symptomatic, but it's, it's a common condition. We can treat them, uh, use the beads to treat men who have uh, benign prostate hyperplasia or BPH, where the prostate is large, they have urinary symptoms. And now we're studying, um, and hopefully in the near future, we mm. can treat these beads to treat the stomach for patients who are obese. Follow-up question. We do a lot of healthcare programming, a lot of medical-related programming. Again, check our website out to find out some of that programming. But it seems to me, that it's shocking to me, doctor, that innovation also sometimes means breaking down of barriers amongst clinicians yeah. who now are talking to each other. Say radiologists. There are different kinds of radiologists, right? Sure. You're talking to each other, engaging each other, sharing information. That's innovative? Well, that is innovative because unless we communicate, we're not going to really figure out what are the, what are the problems and what are the challenges Too many need barriers to address. in the past? There were too many barriers in the past, and we were siloed, you know, so a radiologist would do his work in his office. Or hers. It, or hers. Um, now, because of text messaging, because of um, so online is he, communication. Sorry for interrupting. Is it easier to communicate, collaborate, and, and, and share information because of innovative technology? It is. So, for instance, electronic health records. I remember growing up, to get a referral from a doctor's office, you'd go see the doctor, come back the next day, pick it up, go to your specialist, it was a whole ordeal. Now that same process takes me a few miles clicks. Because of electronic medical records? Exactly, exactly. And that's the type of investment some it's made uh, to make that type of care seamless for patients. And so the more seamless, seamless our care is, the better we'll be addressing the health challenges of our patients. Dr. Badi, I want to thank you. Uh, Dr. Wasim Badi is a medical director of interventional radiology at Summit Medical Group. I want to thank you for joining us, doctor. Thank you for having me. Well done.